Let's get it. Hop off a 16 passenger. This a G5. No, this not a challenger. Big one. I keep some members with me in the fridge. The coat seats. They some cannibals. Eat us. They like the geek geek. Drink a whole bottle. Wake up and repeat. Damn. She took a look. Mixed it with the chill out. Now she says she said. Hey guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. So I wanted to do a video on the House of Jasmine. I have so many things just uh, moving around in my head about this situation because it's so convoluted. Um, first of all, um, I did a video about her before at least one I know. And we talked about the fact that she moved from Memphis to Georgia. I mean, not to Georgia, but to uh, Texas. Now, at the time, I wasn't clear on why she allegedly moved. Apparently, she moved because she was staying in a very uh, crime-written, drug-written area. She felt unsafe there. Uh, you know, she had drugs out, out, just even right outside of her door. You know, I mean, I get that. Now, with that being the case, I would definitely want to move. But if I didn't have the ample money or a proper plan in place, I definitely wouldn't have uprooted my kids and went to a state uh, halfway across uh, the country that I don't know nobody. Like, that still is no reason for her to have done that. It's just not. Um, another thing was she had mentioned before that her... Uh, previous location where she was, she um, was going through an eviction and that the House of Rental, Rental Assistance Program paid the eviction, where apparently that's not the case. So she still has that over her head, which is going to heavily affect her getting a new place in Dallas. Um, so, I mean, the likelihood of her being able to rent something quality has been seriously affected. Now, she could have easily uh, found another way or a loophole around that by uh, going ahead and making sure that that stuff was squared away before she moved, but it's still a negative on her. Um, another thing she could have did is reached out to housing uh, or to apartments or, or uh, homeowners, whomever, before she got there to try to have something already worked out. Um, another thing that she mentioned was the fact that her car was stolen uh, and damaged at the other place. And she mentioned that uh, the lady who owned the apartments didn't help her. Uh, get her car back. Now, my question is, number one, your insurance should have covered the loss of the car and they should have uh, paid you something toward that car to help you get another vehicle unless you didn't have insurance. Also, unless you were upside down in your car, obviously that would not be a resource to help you either. But now what I don't understand is why you expect the lady who owns your apartments to help you. All, she, all her job is is to give you a place to stay. It's not her job to uh, help you get your place or help you get, fix your car situation unless maybe she had uh, cameras and can show what happened. Whatever the case is, you knew where you were living. You knew what was going on there. So it's kind of your responsibility there too to provide not only a home to your children, but to do your best to provide the safest home. Now, there's a lot of people who end up in situations that aren't the greatest and they have to deal with that until they can do better. And I understand that could have been your situation, but still, whether or not that was the case, it still is not the job of your landlord to handle an auto theft situation. It's just not. So uh, let's move to the next thing. Uh, she mentioned she got upset with some woman because she was saying, uh, you're going to end up homeless again. Well, let's look at that. Number one, you are on a public platform. Not only are you on a public platform, you just did a GoFundMe. So you are asking people who work their asses off every day to get their money to give you their money without recourse, without pro providing a service to them. So they're not buying something from you. They're basically stepping in to help you uh, do your job as a whatever, whether it's a parent, whether it's a 
homemaker, whatever, um, because that's not even the point of my statement. But when you open your mouth to ask people for their help, you also open your life up to their scrutiny. So if a woman said what she said, it is what it is. You just got to suck up and drive the hell on because if it's true, it's true. If it's a lie, why would you worry anyway? So the thing is, okay, you ended up homeless again. Now what? She, she wasn't lying. Okay, she didn't lie on you, number one. Number two, not only did she not lie, you still got to deal with your situation. So while you focused on being mad at somebody who basically told the truth about your what was coming because she could see it and you couldn't, it don't change nothing. And you turning your comments off, don't change nothing. And heck, I thought you were monetized. So you're not even making money off the videos. I felt like the purpose of the videos being put up was really to uh, use this situation um, to help grow your channel. And I mean, you said you received over a thousand followers in two weeks, so it's clearly working. But you have to take the good with the bad. If you're going to use this situation to grow your channel, and every time you do a freaking video, you throwing your kids all up in the in, in the camera. Here's Zara. Here's baby Zara. Here's this baby. Here's that baby. I mean, let's be honest. You are right now the textbook definition of what people talk about when they say uh, they're using their kids uh, for views or uh, another thing that people say is uh, exploiting the kids. You are using the fact that people love children and people have a soft spot for children to use the fact that we see these kids going through this with you to provoke us into some type of action. The action could be as small as watching your video to try to get you monetized or it can be as big as sending you money on a, on a cash app or, or participating in your GoFundMe. That's the truth. So what you need to understand is what you are doing. And are you going to have people saying negative stuff? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you really can't worry about that. Because at the end of the day, your goal is to create a level of stability for you and your children. And the only way you're going to do that right now in a situation that you have put yourself in is for you to get out and get a damn job or for you to uh also pull in maybe money from your your uh site and maybe get monetized other places i don't know i think it's it, it wasn't a smart idea for you to just jump up and 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 what was it she said? I stepped out on faith and went to Texas. You went to Texas without not not having enough money to stay in the hotel, not having enough money to do anything. As a matter of fact, I recall you saying that you had to get pampers from the Salvation Army for your daughter. And because of that, she ended up having a medical situation that you had to deal with. Like that's 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 not good. And to be that helpless, I don't understand how you are not going crazy because there's no way in the world that I could have put myself nor my children in that situation. Now, let me be honest about something. I left a sta the state of Arkansas, I moved to the state of Florida years ago when my kids were, were young as well. They were newborn and two years old. I had income because I was getting unemployment. I had a person to stay with already put together so when i got there i had a place to go i didn't have to go to no hotel or none of that shit um i don't think i had a job quite yet but again like i said i had just had a child and i had at least another six to eight months of income i ended up within 30 days of being there in a major car accident and then something changed with one of the girls who i was taking over the lease for her she decided not to move out 
which meant eventually we was going to have to find us a place to stay because I was supposed to take her spot. So with that being the case, I ended up in a homeless situation. Was I living on the streets homeless? No, but I didn't have my own lease. So it was still the same thing. Now, all of the preparing I did to move to this other state, I still had money coming in. I still had resources available and all of that. I had money in the bank, all of that, and had a car. But I still ended up in another city without... And I spent about three months without a vehicle. And it was tough. As a matter of fact, the year that all of this happened, it was a hurricane. As a matter of fact, I want to say it was two hurricanes that first year I moved to Florida. So we ended up having to go to a shelter, not because of homelessness. I went to a shelter because we had to evacuate from where we were staying because of the hurricane. It was required in the area that I was in. So, I mean, even that short 24 to 48 hours I spent at that shelter was the most traumatic thing I think I ever been through. So I don't understand how you volunteered your kids for that. I just really don't get it. Another thing about the car situation, you uh, said why you didn't have a car, but you didn't address why you didn't get anything out of that to put yourself into another vehicle. Now, another thing you mentioned too, uh, you know, that you went through an eviction, eviction and all of that. Well, your latest video you put out that you worked just four months in 2022. So why on earth did you think you even had enough money to move in the first place? Like, more and more as you talk, things are not adding up. And it just seems like you really did something hastily without thinking. Because you were already talking about, oh, I hope we get to stay in Texas. Why would you leave Memphis and not feel like you could stay? That's a long way to go and not be sure of anything. And let's be honest. I'm sitting here making this video and on the television, I just seen something that um, a hotel was hiring $29 an hour for a uh, customer service work from home. Conversion is hiring work from home. Delta Airlines is hiring work from home. Amazon got work from home jobs. Hell, the Amazon factory got countless jobs, which I don't think you'd be able to do that as a... Uh, as a, a single mom with your situation. But there are so many work from home jobs. So, I mean, even when you are in your hotel room, when the kids are settled and stuff, you could go downstairs to the uh, computer room, get on that computer and apply for some of them work from home. Cause I'm sure if I'm seeing them, you seeing them. So I hope that you get it together. Ladies and gents listening to this video, I hope that you guys may have resources for her as well. Um, maybe you can tag her in the comments and maybe give her some ideas. I'm going to tag her. Um, because, I mean, you can't ask for folks help and then think that they can't give you their two cents with that help. And then again, you know, whether or not you want the two cents or not, you never know where your blessings are going to flow from. You don't know who has the key to unlock the prosperity that you got on the way to you. So sometimes you might have to take that bad, but with that bad, it's always good. Everything in life is balanced. So uh, I think it's unfortunate that uh, House of Jasmine put herself in that situation. I think it's unfortunate that those kids are going through that. Now that she's in a hotel room, I hope that the kids, you know, can stay. She seems very attentive. She does not seem like a bad mother, just from what we've seen. She seemed a little, oh gosh, what can I say? I don't know. I, I'm just going to leave that alone. But special, I'm going to say special. She, she seemed a little special, you know what I'm saying? But she don't seem like a bad mom. And I hope that now that she's moved to the hotel, that her kids don't have to publicly let everybody know that they are homeless. Because the fact of having to be picked up at the Salvation Army, that's a lot going on. And it's unfair to those children because they didn't ask for that. They didn't even ask to be here. 
But if you're going to bring, bring them here as a parent, you make sure that you bust your behind to give your kids 100% of the best of everything that this world has to offer them. And it shouldn't matter what you have to do to make that happen. Same with the little girl. She done had an issue um, with having to have borrowed pampers. And then she was at the doggone um, barbershop and putting stuff in her mouth that's been probably on the floor. Ain't no telling who touched it if their hands was clean. Like, come on, baby girl. You got to do better than that. So, as of right now, that's what I have to say. Um, I hope for the best for you. I hope for the best for the kids. Um, and we're going to continue to watch the channel. I hope guys that you have some insight that you'd like to put into this conversation as well as insight that you could put in to maybe help her and maybe we can just tag her there. Now she does have a GoFundMe. You're welcome to go to her channel and see that, um, for me. I will watch her videos and give her a view, but I'm not giving her my money. I'm just not because I just, I have a, I take care of a, enough babies right now and I just don't have it in my budget to do that. So I'm just going to be honest about that. Not to mention, I think that a lot of her actions are careless. So I wouldn't want to give her cash. Now, would I try to help with something else maybe like once she got a place would i buy something for her place maybe something like that but i wouldn't put no money in her hands just because she just does not seem to have the best um decision making skills and i'll just leave it at that not only that um i remember on the video the other day she was saying something about her nails and her hair um, as if soon she gets some money, she going to go try to work on that. Girl, if you don't uh, calm your nerves and worry about getting your baby's uh, uh, address, I know some. Anyway, guys, this video has been long enough. I hope that you have enjoyed this content. If you're new here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back. And please be sure to hit that sub. And like I said, uh, please like this video. And definitely, definitely, definitely give me your comments below. See you next video. Bye. Let's get it. I fought for 16 passenger. This is G5. No, this not a challenger. Big one. I keep some members with me in the fridge. The coat seats. They some cannibals. Eat us. They like the geek geek. Drink a whole bottle. Wake up and repeat. Damn. She took a look. Mixed it with the chill out. Now she say she's saying 3D. Wow. I go in the jungle and they got a coat. I bet I come out with a meme. I bet I do this shit for the fam. Cause this shit